He did spot a lion, everybody, with his bat eyes. There we are. Two lionesses, I think exactly the same two that we had last night. They don't look like they've eaten a great deal since last night. But behind them, an enormous herd of wildebeest heading away. And they seem to be heading these two lionesses to exactly the same tree under which they were sleeping yesterday and the day before that. And if there's one thing about the lions in the Mara, they tend to be much more creatures of habit than those we find around Juma. Why that would be the case, I don't know at all. But it's very nice to have found the lions. I'm just looking at them. We'll get much closer to them and see what's going on if they've eaten. Rebecca, you want to know there are more lion prides in the Mara than in Juma? Well, Juma is uh, roughly, what is it, 1,200 hectares or so, uh, times two and a half. Gives you about 3,000 acres. The Mara is 470,000 acres. So, yes, there are far more lion prides here than there are at Juma. In the Sabi sand, which is about the same size as the Mara Triangle, I would say there are probably almost the same number of prides as there are in the Mara Triangle here. So, I, I, you know, I don't think the density is that much higher here. It might be very slightly higher, and you probably it supports a greater number of nomadic males than a place like the Sabi sand does. Let's get a bit closer to these chaps and see if they ate anything last night. Now, Red, you're wondering about white muscle disease. Now, this was a disease, for those of you who don't know, that the lions of the Unkuhuma pride got last year as a result of their eating buffalo during a very severe drought that we had. And those buffalo lacked a certain nutrient. Of, they lacked fat, which in turn, I believe, um, helps with the... Oh, this is a very difficult area. We're going to have to go around it eventually. I believe helps with the absorption of vitamin E. And that gave them white muscle disease. So that, you know, on that basis, Red, you want to know if the lions here get white muscle disease, I'm sure. And during a very severe drought, it would be possible. But it's very unusual for white muscle disease to occur anywhere, not just here, uh, but a tumor as well. So it only happens after some severe droughts. Remember, fat is a limiting nutrient out here. It's an extremely valuable nutrient for energy and for milk production in mammals. And there's a big male behind him. Is that fat is bad for you, that animal fat is in some way responsible for cardiovascular disease and it would seem that that is quite untrue he looks like he's got a pretty full belly i must say and then look at the magnificent fellow behind him now what's interesting here is that the youngster is with the adult and i don't believe that that youngster can be his son because i think he's too old to be tolerated and so it's quite possible that they have formed a little coalition here. He is in prime condition, this fellow. And I think they've given up hunting. I wonder if they didn't have some dinner fairly recently. And then now they're going to go and lie under the same tree. Jeffrey, absolutely precisely what will happen you say when the lions leave at uh, not the lions when the migration leaves here will the lions become more serious about hunting definitely we watched the angama pride before these herds reached up towards the top of the mara triangle we watched them hunting zebra almost on a nightly basis and they struggled and they had to hunt exactly in the same way that the Nkuhuma pride does I still think these grasslands, even when the migration is not here, support a greater density of ungulates. Now here's a th third line, yes. A greater density of ungulates, for example, than the uh, mass, at least than, than the Sabi sand is able to, and that's simply because the soil is richer, it's had much more recent volcanic activity, and that means that the grass is that much more nutritious and that much thicker. Uh, she doesn't look very fat at all. It's rather 
rather nice, a rather big pride of lions. Definitely worth sitting with them, and if not for the rest of the day, certainly to follow them this evening. The male seems to be going back towards where they were sleeping before. Craig, just through there, straight through the end, can you see in the far distance? She seems to be going off, and she's the one to be watching, I think. She's the one to be following. We'll just keep an eye on her. She might be thinking about doing some hunting. The males definitely aren't. They seem to be heading back towards their sleeping spot. It's very nice that they're so regular, I must say. Hello, Sniper. You say the lion prides in Africa are decreasing uh, size-wise. No, I don't think so. And the lion, the pride of uh, the, the pride of a size of lions, the size of a pride of lions is defined almost purely by the amount of prey they have in an area. So, in an area like this, five or six females is quite a big pride. Still, I mean, you will get mega prides, obviously, uh, that consist of sort of more than twenty lions from time to time, but that's very unusual. Let's just go to the male quickly, the big male. He seems to be stalking almost, maybe thinking about having a play or having a bit of a box with the young male. Yeah, look at him. This is interesting. There might be a bit of a fight here. What's he doing? I mean, the, big, the little male must know he's there. Very difficult to stalk inconspicuously when you weigh 250 kilograms. Well, that'd be very big. He's probably about 220 odd. We are going to have to move shortly if we're going to catch up with those lionesses. But let's just see what plays out here. Looks like he's going to pounce now. It might be playful, it might be aggressive. I doubt it's aggressive. I think the youngster's looking at him. So, Sniper, I'm just going to quickly finish your question. Lion numbers are absolutely decreasing across Africa. But in an area like this where prey numbers are consistent and have been for the last 40 years, 50 years or so, uh, the pride prides will certainly change size from time to time, but it's got nothing to do with any sort of conservation issue. The big chaps now, again, stalking his younger cohort, another female stalking him from the right-hand side. It's quite fun to watch. I think the male's now gone to sleep. All right, we're going to have to move. Otherwise